Hey guys, so uh, now that my supercharger's back together, um, I just kind of wanted to go over my setup to help uh, put some information out of there since sometimes it's really hard to dig up information regarding these kits since they're no longer in production and they're not super common to see. Um, so in my last video, I kind of showed a little bit about the fuel rail, but um, now that it's all together, I'll just give you a quick rundown of my setup, uh, some of the parts I used and maybe where some of the vacuum lines and stuff are running. And then at the end of this, um, I guess if you guys feel do you need more information or you're trying to run a similar setup, you can always ask me questions um, down below in the, in the comment section. I'm pretty good about getting back to people. So just a general overview. This is uh, obviously it's a D16 um, Y8 um, stock valve terrain. Um, I do have forged rods and SRP 10 to 1 pistons just because uh, when I first built this, we accidentally windowed the stock block and <laughs> snapped a couple of the uh, stock rods. So I did build the bottom end. Um, but it's stock head, stock valve terrain, stock cam. I do have an adjustable cam gear, but that was more just because I broke the original one. Um, but anyway, uh, over to the supercharger, you'll see that it's in here. It is very tight fit. Um, if your kit's not specifically for the Y8 engine, you might have some clearance issues. I actually had to pound the uh, the shock tower there again to get a little bit of clearance, and it's, it's tight. It's like the belt's width. Um, it's a very tiny belt, obviously, um, and the supercharger's in um, very tight back there. Um, this valve here is actually what uh, what controls the boost. Um, they are hard to find, so be careful when you're putting them in. You can see I had to JB weld mine back together because we broke the nipple off. Um, as far as your connections go, um, this line here is running over to a four bar map sensor. You don't wanna use the factory one on the throttle body You'll never see boost on the ECU and it'll be a pain in the ass to tune. Um, so this is running to that and the T here is running back to the the emission system because I have to keep that based on where I'm living. This other line is running over here to the AEM fuel pressure regulator so it can rise with the boost level. Um, this here runs to my boost gauge inside the car. This runs to the brake booster obviously. Um, on the valve here it runs down and there's another nipple down here um, where the intake tube connects to the supercharger that's where you run that this line here is running to the purge valve which i've relocated normally it's down here behind the alternator um, again i just had some space and wanted to make stuff easier to get to so um, another huge thing to note is i have the jb tuned um, fuel kit here that deletes the factory fuel filter so down here if you can kind of see it you'll see um, you cut the factory fuel lines off and you adapt AN fittings onto them so I have the feed line running up here under the S tube the filters right here and it feeds into the line and the return line runs down back there um, what that actually gave me room to do was run this Mishimoto compact catch can um, I also have the JB tuned block fitting uh, where you get rid of the factory uh, black box oil collector thing. So that's running from here to the intake side, and then of course I'm running from the valve cover to the other intake, inventing to atmosphere. Um, I did find that if you try and do this in a recirculating setup, the supercharger just sucks in so much air that it fills the catch can really quick. Like I'm talking like two to three miles of driving. So once I ventilated it, it's good to go. Um, you can tell it's ventilating, but it doesn't fill the can up that rapidly. Um, other thing to note, you want to run an OBD-1 air intake sensor. Um, you just stole that off of some car at the junkyard and splice it into the factory wiring harness. You'll see my original sensors down here in the intake tube just so that hole is plugged up. Um, you really want to get those intake temperatures and read them correctly because it hugely affects how the car runs. If you're running just this one, it never sees the heat that the supercharger generates. Um, other things to note here, um, I'm running the Skunk 2 Alpha header that's for their Rotrex supercharger, but um, it fits up nicely. It gives you a lot of room to play with down here. Um, I don't have the factory AC, but it might still fit. Can't confirm that. I did keep power steering. Um, and then your typical other stuff you see, uh, aluminum radiator, intake running down into the fender well. Um, couple things to note um, if you're considering running a um, an oil cooler which I have down here in the front of the car um, when you try with the supercharger the factory 
or the um, the oil sandwich plate that you put behind the oil filter will not fit the superchargers in the way. So what I actually did is I ran an oil filter relocation kit, and I believe it's the blocks kit. Um, put that on the back of the block, ran two dash 10 AN lines up here, and then I ran the sandwich plate for the, um, it's a thermostatic sandwich plate for the oil cooler, and that's hiding up here in the front bumper. Um, I didn't try any other brand of sandwich plate. That's the Mishimoto one, um, and it's thermostatic. And like I said, the, the supercharger was just in the way. You couldn't get that. Um, one other thing to mention on here, we talked about the supercharger belt and how tight it is here. Um, you want to be careful when you're tightening this adjuster down here. You don't want to go too tight. You want to leave a little bit of play in, in that line. If you go too tight, it'll snap the belt under load. Um, and you don't want to be stuck on the side of the road because, you know, it runs like crap if it, if it doesn't have that belt on it. Speaking of the belt itself, um, this is the replacement belt. It's a Bando 3PK1220. Um, you can get these direct from, I believe it's Moss Motors who took over for Jackson Racing, but they want like $15 to $17 a belt plus shipping. I actually found these on Amazon um, by searching the part number, and it's like, I believe the last time I bought one was like $7 with the prime shipping and you get it in two days. So uh, just something to keep in mind because these wear out. I've gone through three of them. I always keep a spare in the glove box and a, and a 17 mil wrench just in case I throw a belt. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of information. Again, guys, um, if you're thinking about doing this on your car, or you have any other questions regarding the setup, please feel free to like comment down below and I'll, I'll get back to you. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching.